God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. It's a day of great joy. It's a day of peace. It's a day of power. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise, we exalt, and we magnify you. Thank you for the power of the truth and energy and strength tonight over everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you for joy and impartation and the release of glory. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, we exalt, and we magnify you. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me switch it down so that we can spend some few minutes together. Everybody can hear me. Let me know how you're doing. I want to be sure you're fine. Oh, yeah. Good evening, Yope. God bless you, Dr. Tony. How are you doing? How's the family? How is it going on your side? The Lord is your strength and shield, your very happy in time of trouble. Is going to deliver you out of six troubles. Yea, the seventh one will not come near you. Then you can say that the Lord, the God, the I want to welcome you tonight. So sorry I couldn't come in seven. In fact, it's because I announced last week I'm going to be online. I would have just um, avoided being online tonight because um, there are a couple of things that are happening. But there are good news. There are things of joy. There are there are promises coming to pass. There are prophetic word that is uh, manifesting, and we're so grateful, you know, for His mercy and His grace. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I just want to build up and release a prayer point, at least a prayer point, uh, in addition to what we discussed last week Thursday when we we're talking about access, you know, and acceptance uh, when it comes to the scope of relationship. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your word today. We're just grateful. Thank you for the expressions of your truth as we come together in these uh, feed opportunities and platforms. And we thank you for everyone that is on my voice. I'm praying, oh God, that you release energy in a multiple fold over everyone. No one under the sound my voice will be dry of strength and energy, dry of power, dry of energy that proceeds from your spirit. But out of words that proceed out of our mouth tonight, you will cause everyone to be strong in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So let's get into this. The word of the Lord that I want to that that, that came in that I really want to uh, place as a seal as a burden as we discussed tonight is that God asked me to tell somebody. Oh man, and I love it. It's so beautiful. God had me to tell somebody, and I want to please type it. Say, I'm going to give you wisdom to suspect errors. <laughs> wisdom to suspect wisdoms. 
plural now to suspect errors in other words we see it in advance oh the bible says the, the bible the, the bible says a man a, God, a man of no understanding sees an error sees a for a pit he falls into it but a prudent man sees you know an evil advance in advance and he avoided it so i don't know who this word is meant for but i release it upon you in the name of jesus the wisdoms no wisdom wisdoms thank you for typing in to suspect errors errors as you proceed into 2023 i place this as a mark as i oil on your altar in the name of jesus christ within your jurisdictions to your family to your assignment God is going to release upon you, even to you. Oh, I'm saying that to somebody that has that runs a business right now. More like I receive that word. God is going to give you wisdoms to suspect errors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get into the business. How accessible are you? How accessible are you? Is what I want us to just drill a little bit. And this has to do with relationship, really. Let me bring a statement out of what we discussed last week Thursday when we were talking about assets, assets and acceptance. The ideology about this is to take us to a level whereby we believe that asset is good, but there are some things you cannot purchase for your personal consumption because some things come in life that you just need for a season. And when you need it for a season, it God brings it to you as an access. Because, if, like I gave a very good example last week, I said, for instance, now if God wants to take you to the seven continents in the world, you don't need to have houses in all the continents. You just need to have connections in all the continents in a way that when you wake up one morning, if you go to a place, you have access. The reason why you don't need that asset is because there are 365 days a week in a year. But you are not spending the whole three, six, five days there. Probably just spending one or two days or one or two weeks or maximum one month. You won't even want to go through the struggle of saying, oh, and that's why, and that's why, look at it the way the world is now, that you can have a passport that can give you access to countries without you living in that country. But the access they will give to you is access, oh, that's a beautiful example, is access for a few days. A few months. What we are saying is that you can be intelligent for everything, but you cannot be anointed for everything. Let me say that again. You can be intelligent. You can have a high level of intelligence for everything, but you cannot be anointed for everything. So the scope of access and acceptance, as we discussed last week, is to take us to a level as a believer to understand the fact that whatever it is that is not an asset to you, you must be able to learn how to access it. We said beyond the level of you, you know, building people, helping people, building a reputation, building a good way, intangible assets in your life, it takes you to that point in which when you need some things, you know who to call, who to talk to, and by virtue of the discipline and, and, and relationship you build over time, you can access those resources. And I gave you a practical example. Please watch on IGTV and in my YouTube what I described. So even when Jesus came on it, through him all things were made. John chapter 1 said it. Through him all things were made. Through him all things were made. But when he came on the head, he was not living as if he owns everything. Jesus was not saying, well, was, was not priding in assets, but he was priding in assets. Even when he was giving back to what's called a manger, <laughs> he, he didn't build an hospital. What does it cost God to say, my son is coming to the earth, build an hospital for, before he comes, you know? You can have that level. There are people that, oh, I'm having a baby, I buy a car for that baby, you know, and stuff like that. But God won't do that. But there was an access to a manger. Are you with me? When Jesus even was to die, the separate car was not his own. It was an access. Remember that story. Even when Jesus you know, was to have his last supper with his disciples and he wanted to, he wanted to be he didn't need to go and build a house. We are saying to you, believers, that access is something that believers should begin to pay attention to. That whatever it is that God does not access, it. this is where we did. This is how we did. I'm going somewhere, but let me just push this across to you again. This is how we this, this define access. Access is you having opportunity to enjoy a benefit without paying for it within the period in which you need it. 
And when you are done using it or enjoying the benefit, you must be wise enough to release it back to the one that gave it to you. This is an opportunity you enjoy. So Jesus wanted to do the Last Supper. He just said to his disciples, I've got an access. He said, follow that guy. He's going to take you there. When you get there, tell him, I needed that upper room. <clears throat> and he got the upper room and enjoyed the access. And that was it. The reason this is important because we grew up in an African environment where we're so crazy about assets, which is not bad. Everybody, so they prove that you are this, you bought a car, you build a house, you do all of that, and there's nothing wrong with it. But we are just saying to you that as a believer, you must understand that some things that God will expect you to have as an asset, but others it must have. I'm telling you, the worth of assets is stronger than the worth of assets. It's, I'm telling you, it's stronger. It's stronger. It's stronger. It's stronger. In those days when we were growing up, you know, uh, the, the, there's always a common statement. You say, oh, that guy doesn't have much money, but he knows people. He has connection. As in, in that word. As in, you tell him, do you, I want to say, I know somebody there. I know somebody there. And they build that level of capacity in which when they speak, people respond to them. They are not even, they, they, they can have access to resources and they are not even there. They don't have a day can so how to manage you, whatever. Somebody is already having sleepless nights on their, on their behalf. And one of the words that came is that God in his mercy is going to give you a sense of sensible, a sensible heart that you might be able to increase your access base across the globe. Increase your access base. Oh my goodness. Increase your access base. Let me give you a scripture that will even buttress this. It's one of the scriptures that I love. If you read James chapter 5, now you still with me, if you're with me. Just shout out, I'm, I'm excited tonight. I just want to, I'm excited tonight. That's the good news. <laughs> but I'm excited tonight. But let me just pour this on you, knowing fully where you look. This, as I'm speaking to you right now, things, things should be stirring up in your spirit. I'm telling you, there, there will be a fresh, things, the fresh burden is on somebody as I'm talking to you right now. Be stirring up. I'm telling you, I'm saying to somebody today, hope a life, hope a life in the name of Jesus, right? Whatever it is that I've turned to bondage your hands, that when it, oh, my conda vaca sap because when it came to your hand, it looks like a benefit, but now it has turned to bondage in your hand. I decree by the power in the name of Jesus, is dropping down. It's dropping down in the name of Jesus Christ. A benefit will not become a pain and a prayer in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus now, I wanted to give you a scripture. James chapter 5. Yeah, thank you Jesus. James chapter 5. Bible says, is there anyone sick among you? He said, let him pray. Is there, is there anyone joyful? He said, let him sing praises to God. He said, but is there anyone afflicted? Let him call on the elders. That's asses. Let him call on the elders. The anointing for healing is not on them. It's not on you when you are afflicted, but because you have connection with elders, and mark that word, it's not elder. Is there anyone afflicted, anyone sick rather, let him call on the elders, plural, so that they can pray on him, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and if they are sin, shall be forgiven. So the question I ask people is that when somebody is sick today, boom, and Bible recommends that when you're sick, don't pray, call on the elders. The question I ask is that if you don't have a relationship with elders before, how will you connect with them and assess them when you get sick? Because that's one of the foolishness or the mistake of a generation, that you're waiting for a need to rise before you begin to build you know, opportunities around you that will be able to help you. Are you with me? So... If relationship is that important, if you know now that you cannot live in isolation, that you need people around you, before you, beside you, and behind you, then you have to be intelligent in cultivating selfless relationships. And the beauty about cultivating selfless relationships is that it is ordained by God. It's God that brings them around in trinkles, you know, by circumstance, by chance. You know, some will even just be by mistake. And God does it intentionally, expecting you to pay attention to the details of those relationships and sacrifice over that relationship because you don't know what the future demand is going to be like. Are you with, are you with me? 
have you ever have you ever had somebody said before that i went to a place and i needed the help and by the time they meet somebody there they discover that the person they met there is somebody that they have abused or or or, or you know treated badly before then you begin to wonder so i'm trying to encourage people here that will let you know that you you this, this thing that Oh, God will do it for you. I know he will do it for you, and he's doing it for us. But there are some things that God will always use specific people to do for us, and he will never do it for us. He will place it on people, expecting you to maintain the relationship, treating people well, building people well, knowing fully that one day you may need them. Now, this is where I'm going, and this is the bullet point for tonight. How accessible are you then? How accessible? If everything is not about having assets, it's about having access. How available? How accessible are you? I want to. I want us to appraise our access gates. Appraise our access gates, and I want to just give you, you know, some 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 bullet points that I've noticed, especially in this our generation, that we need to be aware of when it comes to this issue of of access and relationships. If you want to increase your access base, number one, don't form levels. Don't form levels. One of the things I've noticed as I grow in my work with Jesus is that great treasures are always hidden. You can meet somebody today. You can meet somebody today who is a nobody. To you is a no entity. In fact, they are crawling on the floor to help you today. But there's a treasure in them. There's a treasure in them. If you form levels like we used to do, everywhere, in fact, those of us, in fact, is, is a thing in, in the world system. Everybody is doing levels. You know what I mean by levels? You're just trying to, 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 to create an atmosphere, a standard that wants to separate you and make you, and, is, and all of this is a lie. It's a lie. Some of most of those things are even packaging. Don't form levels. Don't form levels. You have to treat people. <laughs> well, you, you you can't meet somebody for the first time and all you're trying to prove how you're better and you know, you know, doesn't make sense. I'm saying to you today that there is somebody in your life right now that has a great treasure inside of them that you cannot even see. And the reason why you can't see is because you are not even Holy Ghost. And God brings them to your life for you to just help them a little bit and that's the end of it. But you don't know what will happen in the next 5, 10, 15 years. How accessible are you? How accessible are you? Don't form levels. Number two, don't form busy. I hope somebody can be typing this for us. Don't form busy. Time only reveals our parity, really. Time only reveals our parity. Because now, uh, pastoring 50 people, they have a book appointment two weeks before they can talk to you, for goodness sake. <laughs> at, at, at our level, at our level, somebody is sending you message, it's taking you uh, 48 hours before you even acknowledge you received it. Come on, don't, don't for, be, <laughs> Time is is a, is a currency of life, but I must tell you that time only reveals superiority. You can't be busy for you not to eat. You can't be busy for you not to do something things that are important to you. So if you want to increase your access base. The truth of the matter is that you must be accessible. And when you are accessible, one of the things you don't do is that you don't have to busy. Everything you, you, you can, you do. if you cannot type, you can drop voice message. Please, I'm pleading with you. Especially those of us in diaspora. I know your busy schedule is tight. Well, please, five, ten minutes, you can share through your WhatsApp message or receive some missed call, drop voice messages. You cannot be forming busy. For me, at my, at my age, especially in these early 40s that we're in right now, if we don't have my time, we can't build anything. We can't build anything. We can't build anything. We can't build anything. Don't form business number three. Don't prove better. Relationship is for consolidation, not for comparison. Don't prove better. Because in this journey of destiny, nobody is really better. We're just different. Don't prove better. Don't prove better. And I've seen this in different layers that when people mix together, the first, and it's not new, the first thing everybody wants to check is that uh, in which area am I better than this person? In which area is this person? But what God expects us to do when he's bringing people together and he's giving us access is to check our differences and be able to contribute to those people's life. 
Again, let me repeat it. How accessible are you? How accessible are you? You want to increase your access base, you've got to be accessible. And one of the things we must deal with, factors we must deal with, is that we can't form levels. You can't create a cocoon for yourself and say, oh, I'm special. Everybody is special. I'm gifted. Everybody is gifted. I'm better. Everybody is better in one area or the other. The reason it's proven that you're better right now is because we are discussing a subject matter that is your area of specialization. Don't form busy. You must... <laughs> don't form busy. And don't prove better. Relationships for consolidation or for comparison. Then this one that I also observe is don't feel in shy. You enter into a new relationship. And this uh, and this app of Jesus Christ. I don't want to take this into ministry. This happened a lot in ministry that you meet somebody for the first time, and the next thing they're expecting is that you are sons, that you are their daughters. Then you meet people for the first time, everything about your mind is that you are the one. And it's not new. When Jesus was to go to the cross, the Bible, the Bible says disciples gather together, and the next question is who is going to be the, the best among us? Until Jesus have to teach them that if you want to have that access as a leader, is your responsibility to serve others. Are you still with me tonight? Oh, Makonde Veke Seproko Super Labashapa. That body is on me tonight. Wisdom to escape and suspect mistakes. And this is critical. Hallelujah. Don't feel in charge. One of the things I've discovered when it comes to relationship level is that when two, three people come together, most times temperament is what we use to choose the leader. So three, four people come together, the guy that is vocal among us say, oh, this is what we're going to do. The fact that you are the vocal among us or you are the, or you are the one that has the highest drive right does not mean that you are the one that is going to lead the group. Are you with me? Every time, you know, People come together. It is the vision that brought them together that leads that group, not the temperament. This is very key, and I want to please master this. In any relationships you find yourself, in people or even in church, is the vision that the time. And this is the secret, you know, between that, that causes the, the, the you know the disunity or the separation between Paul and Barnabas. Paul said to Barnabas, "Let's get down to the con to the towns." And to the churches we've been together before, so that we can strengthen them. He's the one that pioneered it. But Barnabas said, This is how we do it. And they were separated. The name Barnabas became silence in the Bible, but Paul navigated to the next season of his ministry. His vision that determines the leader when people come together, not the temperament. So we have to stop feeling, because some of us are choleric, some of us are forceful. When we get to a place like this, just want to set up the place, set the place on fire, decide going to be. It doesn't work that way. Are you with me? Number one, don't form levels. Number two, please don't form busy so that you can have access. Hallelujah. Number three, don't prove better. Number four, don't feel in shy. Number five, don't struggle to reconcile. Don't struggle to reconcile. God asked me to tell somebody today, how many times does it do you want apologies? <laughs> How many times somebody did something wrong to you? They apologize first, they apologize second, they apologize. Ah, come on, bro. Accept it. Now, how you now build the relationship might be different, but accept the apology. How long? How many times do you want to apologize? How many times do you want to apologize? Hallelujah. It's very, very critical. How many times do we apologize? Don't struggle to reconcile. When people do something wrong, the genuine is a genuine repentance. You might want to watch them, but please accept the apology. And one of the ways by which you know you accept the apology is that you must have a heart that is genuine before them that wants to help them. And in the name of Jesus, I pray today that the spirit of forgiveness rest upon us that, that that the body that that the body that was lifted up our heart by the reason of jesus for giving our sins god is going to give us that same template of heart so that we'll be able to treat people others other people like that in the name of jesus it doesn't want it to burn the bridge because one thing i know about relationship is that relationship enter three to four stages there's always be a time of familiarity and joy movement that you enter into a testy movement before you can enter into a season where you can trust somebody but the time of testing is a time of misunderstanding. That all you just need is patience sometimes to just deal with people. Their character might not change, but if you can just be patient with them. You don't know. You don't know whether it was a test that ordained by God. And don't say, oh, the way he's behaving, we're going to call this up, it's over. No. 
how don't struggle to reconcile especially when people knew they're wrong they accept they're wrong you know and and, and they apologize before you don't know somebody understand my voice now it's as if i'm hearing my spirit that you are saying go and bring a letter of apology kilo day let me speak to you man. <laughs> easy <laughs> easy 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 hallelujah don't form levels don't form busy don't prove better don't feel in shy don't struggle to reconcile and number six is that don't we have to learn to give and receive appreciation this is critical we have to learn to give and receive appreciation Remember, I'm dealing with this subject matter. How accessible are you? How accessible are you? These are the gates that open, that opens or closes doors. Give and receive appreciation. Let me first of all say this: when people help you emotionally, from their heart, from their feeling, oh, I tell you, to support you because why they they open their access gate to you, you've got to learn to give appreciation. Every addition is a privilege, not a right. You have to learn to give appreciation. Give up as in you won't say oh thank you thank you one word answer does not fit in for some asset gates as you wait for some asset gate. you've got to give expression be clear oh uh 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 sir uh, or, uh or Remy, you know my friend you know when i when i saw your message it was very encouraging and out of the you know one of the things i picked from the word you said to me is so so statement and it really encouraged my heart took me to what i was passing through at that time and i want to acknowledge this our relationship i appreciate how caring and the way you're praying for me be expressive you know that somebody sent you two paragraphs after interceding and praying or doing something for you, then the only response is that, thank you, sir. Thank you, man. No, 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 no. You have to learn to give appreciation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and also learn to receive appreciation. When you don't receive appreciation, number one is a sign of, of low self-esteem, really. Because when somebody is telling you this is what you want to them, and you are not accepting it, it's because you don't believe in your capacity and your what. Are you, are you with me? That's, that's very important. You have to learn to receive appreciation. And the benefit of appreciation is that when you receive appreciation, it has a way of topping up energy in your soul. It gives you a sense of fulfillment. It gives you energy to want to do more. It gives you, it gives you a proof that you are active, you are resourceful. Are you, are you with me? So you must learn to receive appreciation. So we say, thank you. Don't just keep quiet. Say, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I used to do something when I when I see ladies dress well, talk well, you know, actually dress well when they use makeup sometimes, you know, in those days. I said to you once in a while. And I said to them, Oh, you're looking good. And they would keep quiet. And I would insist. I want to receive appreciation for that. They just say thank you. It's so simple. So simple. How accessible are you? As we enter, I know we've not started praying for 2023, but I want to tell you, somebody understand my voice, that a season of freshness is waiting for you. A season of freshness is waiting for you. Those doors that have turned to barriers, you build them a little bit initially. You build them a little bit initially. But now it has become a wall, a pillar around you that is blocking you. There's no allowing you to accept. It's just, they say, uh, <clears throat> there's a scripture that says, nobody came into them and they, nobody went out. When the name of Jesus will break that wall down. Emotional pillars that you build, there's no allowing access into your life. We pull those walls down and we declare and declare over you, it's time to be, oh my, that's the word for somebody. It's time to be expressive. Are you with me? It's time I release upon every one of you under the sound. It's time to be expressive. In the name of Jesus, a fresh oil upon your tongues. It's time to be expressive. I tell you, it's time to be expressive. In the name of Jesus, that what is in your heart and what is in your mouth is going to connect in this season of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? How accessible are you? How accessible are you? Access for you. Some things will never come as a result of access. You can you 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 can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, you know, 12 months a year, you know, 365 times or even 366 days a, a year just to hit some things. But I can tell you, your what 
can knock and put some assets on the table. But in the school of destiny, you need assets. And that assets, I'm praying that God is going to give to you, that your gift will not be only for your house. It will be for open space. Then in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God will create an auction upon you in which that anywhere you go, anywhere you are accepted, you will be able to maximize the opportunity that God is giving to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, 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 we need to improve our accessibility. How accessible are you? That's what I'm dealing with tonight. How accessible? How accessible are you? How as, I'm not saying how prepared are you. I said how accessible. You could be prepared and not be accessible. You have to develop that structure. If, you, if it is not within your temperament, can you use your spouse? You can't, you, 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 oh, come on, you, you can't have five, six missed calls. Just drop a text message, oh, I'll call you back later. You don't even know the reason for the call. Hallelujah. You've got to be accessible. You've got to be, ac you've got to be accessible. You've got to be accessible. You've got to be accessible. Hallelujah. You've got to be accessible. I don't know why this is coming. It's coming strong on me. God said, I, you know, he said, he said I, I'm ready to bring the gift, but the door is closed. I'm ready to bring the gifts, but the door is closed. I'm ready to bring the gifts, but the door is closed. I'm ready to bring the gift, but the door is closed. Every lady that comes to your life is not a witchcraft. Everyone that greets you on the street is not looking for information about your grandparents. You've got to open up. Open up. You're too close for the next level. You're too close. You're too close. You, you're carrying the auction. You're waiting. You know, you're too close. You, you're a pastor. You have revelation of the spirit day and night. You're waiting for invitation letter before you share. You better talk to your neighbor and share it over your spouse and share it over your children. The gift is at the door, but you're, you're, the door is closed, and we break those doors open. We say, in the name of Jesus, right? You are accessible. Your heart is accessible. You, <laughs> hallelujah. It's accessible to the Holy Ghost. It's accessible to the people that God has called you to be a blessing to. In the name of God. Are you with me tonight? Glory to God. We break that wall. We break that wall over your business. We break that wall. I decree and declare today in the name of Jesus. Every wrong, every wrong mindset that people have had about you, every definition that people have placed about you, they have seen it, they've they've known it about you 50, 20 years, but they don't know you have shown you have grown. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree. Let them have another opportunity to shake your world. And when they come this time, they will discover that the way they left you is not the way they met you. In the name of Jesus, let your heart receive opportunity. Hallelujah. Break that wall. How accessible. How accessible are you? How accessible are you? Hallelujah. Remember the scripture. Let me go a little bit further. I'm about to round up now. Round up now. <clears throat> Come on, talk to me. Are you getting blessed, man? Hallelujah. I'm hearing a sound in the spirit. I will rearrange your life. I will rearrange your life. I will. Let, let, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> let it be scattered. Whatever the level it is right now, God we we arrange. Oh, my candle break it. In secondary school, there is one formula they call Almighty Formula. And I'm hearing a sound in my spirit that God is saying to somebody. He said, Many things might go wrong. He said, But there's one thing in your life. When I fix it, it will fix every other thing. And I'm declaring by the power of the Holy Ghost, then the name of Jesus Christ, that God is going to fix that strategic thing in your life. That will fix you. Oh my God. It will solve the puzzle. It will, it will solve the puzzle. To so somebody, it might just be that when you are peace, everything around you will align. Are you with me? Somebody on that, he said, once you just determine to say, I will take my prayer life serious, every other thing will begin to align. When you make up your mind that I will, I will begin to take time to rest and build strength and learn, learn how to, uh, you know, you know to recuperate and get more strength, you know, everything will begin to learn because you are just too stressful. You're screaming on everybody and not starting to, even people that are smiling at you, you are frowning and then you're questioning, why are you smiling? Because there is a center core, there's a core in your life that needs to be strengthened. And when that is strengthened, every other thing will fall in place and align. I decree by the power in the name of Jesus 
that the core of your life, the core dimension, that which in which the enemy is paying attention to and is thinking or squeezing, lift up your hands so you gaze and be you lifted up, ye everlasting door, that the king of glory might come in. Who is that king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that God is revisiting the core of your life, bringing new energy, bringing new hope, bringing new ability in the name like a current fire is coming in the name of jesus christ that center space if god sort it out every other thing will align hallelujah probably if you just decide that i want to believe and value myself more i value people around me more than i value my if i can just value myself more then the people you attract will become valuable oh my that's another one for somebody did you hear what is coming out of my mouth <laughs> that if you can just pay attention and value yourself more the reason you are attracting people that are less valuable according to you is because you are attracting who you believe you are but if God can come to the center system of your life and increase the revelation of yourself to you and your what increase to yourself your what is good your what is perfect it's just that you lack the revelation of your personality but when God is saying to you now is that I'm going to open you up to yourself so that when you are appreciate who you are and your value, then everything and everyone around you that you are attracted to will begin to operate in a higher and different level. It's the core of you that God wants to do. Oh, the way today. Come proceed, Alambro, Supalaba. Masike, Preko, Supalaba, Yandoba. Weep no more. Weep no more. Weep no more because God has made up his mind. He will not leave you. will not forsake you. In the, he said he's going to strengthen you through this journey. The journey might be long, but he said, he said, he said, expect peace in pain. Expect peace in pain. Expect peace in pain. I, I'm taking through a journey. I'm going to pull stuff out. I want, I want, I want to shake you a little bit. I want to stir some things up inside of you. And for that to happen, there's no way you won't feel it. But why that is happening, I'm going to give you peace in it. I'm going to give you peace in that pain. And I pray for that person in the name of Jesus that God will give you grace to align. God will give you the heart to be submissive. This is to, I'm saying to that person, what you need right now is the word trust. See how you hasty. That in the name of Jesus, God will give you that energy to trust. Ah, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. We make your pathway. I am praying for that person in the name of Jesus who will resume in that school. That journey that God wants to take you to. It might be in pain, but it's going to give you peace in that pain in the precious name of Jesus. Are you still with me tonight? Hanto Sika Frakopala. I hear another sound. God said, I'm going to increase your antenna. Oh, my conde vegede brekete boshaba. This is coming and I'm releasing it upon somebody right now. Ability to hear God in a new level. And then I will increase your antenna. I will increase your antenna. We sing you the channel by the airport. I will sing the channel. The ways you have been hearing before is about to expire. I'm going to open a new way to you. It will be you have to have a heart of a baby for you to be able to pick. Because before you, you see me and you hear me different than but now I want to be speaking through your heart. <laughs> the knowing, the knowing, the your ability to know it will just drop like a cool water upon your heart. It's going, is it, a season, is a season of impression <laughs> by the Holy Ghost of impression. I will begin to impress new thoughts upon your heart. I am changing some, I'm adding to how I'm communicating with you. And I'm praying for that person in the name of Jesus, right? Rise up to that new level to pick the signals of heaven, rise up to that new level. To understand the images of the spirit, rise up to that new level. To have understanding of prophetic symbols, rise up to that new level in which you can stand as a voice to a people around you. In the name of the Lord, oh my conde fekete proko sika pala hindu palo kose fekete magando suka prakataba. I will make you a prophet in your group. I will make you the voice of your group. Others can have this on the table, but you, you're bringing the word of the Lord on the table. And I decree upon you in the name of Jesus open. Let your heart be open to hear the sound of the Spirit in a new way and a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you still with me today? Glory to God. How accessible are you? <laughs> Is the subject matter. We're just trying to bring in the prophetic as being led by the Spirit. How accessible? Are you? How accessible are you? It's critical. 
the spirit of God. What God wants to do in your life today, you cannot afford to be a barrier to yourself. Open the doors, open the gate. Open the gate. Give yourself a chance to be expressive and allow people into your life. Hallelujah. Your next level is coming with new relationships. They will not be like you. They will not talk like you. They will not even have some perspective like you do. You will not always agree. But you must give them access. Are you with me? Are you with me? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you another bullet point briefly. I'm about to round up now. How easy can you access other people's resources? How easy? The Bible said the, uh, the gift of a man make room for him. Definitely, your gift, what you have to put on the table, is one of the ways that gives you opportunity to assess. Open doors, new levels, new relations. People see you for the first time. They want to size you up. Don't try to prove levels with people. Just show who you are. That's your gift. It's the way it made you. If they don't accept your gift, it's because you are not sent to them, and vice versa. Are you with me? So your gift is imperative. And I want to understand your gift. You don't need to borrow other people's gift because it's the most popular. Use yours. Use yours. No matter how small it is, heaven will still announce it. People came to the temple. Everybody was giving big money. And everybody will rejoice. Oh, this is see the Pharisees. But we do just came with a small, with widow's smite and put it on the offering. Jesus saw it and announced it. And announced it. Just be announced. Your gift, you can't afford not to use it. Whether it's popular or not, use it. Use it. Oh, don't wait for poopy. Just one person by this. Just use it. Use it. Number two is that when a gift open give you access, but for you to keep that access, you need character, love and respect. You need character. And definitely, I, you, you guys know this. But what I want to just add, or add to this is that if you want to open doors and sustain those doors, especially with elders, or even with anybody, you have to appreciate the honor code. The honor code. The honor. <laughs> I was talking to a man of God and he said to me, he said, he said, he said I like your maturity. He said, why? He said, because I, I, I share with you my weaknesses. I tell you some of the things I'm passing through. He said, but you will still respect me. He said, but there are some people I'm talking to, the way they're even talking to me. And I said to myself, I understand. In my mind, I was just saying, I understand. That for you to be older than me, more exposed to me, but you're sharing your concern, your pain, what you're struggling with with me, is an opportunity for me to even respect you more. Because if you don't value me, can you see access now? If you don't value me, you will not tell me. And number two, what you are telling me that your challenge is, I'm learning for me to avoid those pitfalls in the future. Are you with me? Are you with me? And it takes a lot of tenacity and character for you to still keep people at the same level of what? When you know their weakness. Did you hear what I'm saying? It takes a high level of character. For you to keep people and retain their level of what? When you have noticed and visibly what, they have, what the weaknesses are. But one thing I know is that when you are somebody that values the importance of honor, even when you are weak, honor are gatekeepers. Ah, Jesus. I always somebody who understand that. Even when you are weak, oh, he's weak. Honor will keep the gates open for you, the access open for you. Are you with me? So you need gift, you need character, but please pay attention to honor. Everybody is valuable in one way or the other. Ability to respect them within the confinement of that value they put on the table is what we call honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Something happened this week. Something happened this week. Somebody that I've not seen before. I've not, I've, not, I've not spoken before wait for over 15 years. Over 15 years. I just woke up one morning with a revelation and God said to me, he said, that lady is due for the next level. He said, but that next level will not come until she honors people or he honors people that have blessed her before. I have a part in her journey. And your responsibility as you grow in life is to begin to go back and begin to check step by step the people that have met you in one bus stop of life and have had it, that when you look at your life today and say, hey, I am who I am today by the grace of God through this person, through that person. And I'm telling you, the spirit of remembering is so intelligent that your, even your mind, your soul is so intelligent 
that you will not forget. The only thing that can make you to forget people that have helped you is pride. It's pride. Because pride is a forgetter of goodness. Then you go and honor them. Honor code. Even when you are weak, honor will keep the gates open for you. Are you with me? As I, as I round up, I want to make a statement and I want you to please go and think about it. As I round up. Three levels of access to your life. Number one, three levels of access to our lives. Yeah, I'm talking about how, to, how you allow people into your life. Even though it's an open gate and initial level, but it, don't, it doesn't remain. Access to people to your heart. This, let me tell you what I, I, I learned this last year or two years ago. I can't even remember. I'm so much of somebody that on the external I can be a choleric, you know, but on the internal, I mean, Melakula, I think a lot about people. So when, when, when I meet people, I want to be close, give them access to my life, you know, and vice versa. Even when they don't give me access to their life, I give them access to my life. Even sometimes my wife complains, oh, you talk too much to people, you know, you're giving them too much information. That is how I open the gate. That's how I open the gate. But what I observe is that people don't meet up to that opportunity given to them. Because sometimes when they come, they are not coming for a relationship, they are coming to size you up. You need to know that. When people come, they're not all, some, they might say they came, but sometimes how they state shows that they didn't come to for a relationship, they just came to size you up. So what I've done is that I keep people in my heart. But once I open the gates and they didn't use this way, I move it from this heart to my head. <laughs> so when they are in my heart, the gate is open. I receive, I give appreciation, I give time. But I moved, when I discovered someone, I moved them from here to here. When they are in my head, you know, they don't give me emotional pain. They don't... <laughs> are you with me? Three layers. Number one, access comes as a gift. It's my choice or it's your choice to allow me in your life. It's a gift. You give it as a gift. I'm saying to you, remember I'm dealing with this subject how accessible are you? When you meet people, whether you like them or not, whether it's God that is sending me or not, whatever. Access starts with a gift. That gift is from you. It's your choice. I'm giving you a gift of access to my life. I'm, give, I'm opening my door to you. I'm giving you my phone number. I'm giving you my address. I'm asking you, you can call me anytime you have. I'm telling you I can give you all the information that benefited me for years to help you. You know, I give you. It's a gift. Hallelujah. But, 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 <laughs> but when you give it as a gift, one of the things you understand is that nobody comes to your life empty-handed. They, they don't come empty-handed. Nobody comes empty-handed. They, they might not be able to put anything on the table immediately. Nobody comes empty-handed. Whether they come for good purpose or bad purpose, nobody comes empty-handed. So, gift is the initial open door of access. But beyond gift, the relationship now to build to a level of service. At the point of gift, I open the door. At the point of service, I'm expecting everybody, you know, to be exchanging resources. Are you with me? Exchanging, oh, this is how I do this. Oh, this is how you do this. Exchanging resources. Hallelujah. In this point now, mutual is our choice to build reputation with people. Not just, I open the door for you, but for you to serve me or for us to serve one another or each other is most sure. Um, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Please, I, I plead with you, as you go in our work with God, never build any relationship on one side. Even couples. Even couples, even with your children. It begins with a gift. But that gift must grow, you know, with service. Are you with me? Then on the final level, it will be consolidated by sacrifice. Let me read it fully now. Every relationship or door of access begins with a gift. That gift grows with service, but consolidated by sacrifice. 
that door of access we're talking about, it might be you can you can give somebody an access as a gift in one day. You can serve it for 10, 20 years before a need for sacrifice. I say it again. Access begins with a gift, grows with service, but consolidated by sacrifice. So Jesus has a friend called Lazarus. He gave him access to his life. And mutually, it's a gift. But you will discover that Jesus gets to that environment, food is going on, is eating. They, they, they knew, <laughs> Mary, Martha, and, and Lazarus, they knew, everybody knew that th these guys are close with Jesus. Jesus is having a meeting, somebody is cooking, and saying, you know, stressed with cooking, saying that, oh, bring my sisters, come and help me. You know, that, that was service. That was service. Then, one day, boom, boom, Lazarus died, and the test of sacrifice came. So, and every relationship we follow, in this door of access we're talking about, we follow those three layers. You, you put on the table, as your own choice, a gift of relationship. I give you access to my life. Then we grow that relationship by serving each other. Then we consolidate the relationship by one day, a need for a need for sacrifice. That day of sacrifice, <laughs> let me say it this way: when is the time of gifts? One party will do it. I'm giving you a gift of access. When is the time of service? It's all of us that is serving one another. But when is the time of sacrifice? It's the other person that once received the gift of access that will put sacrifice on the table. The question is that what sacrifice have you put on the table for those houses that God has given to you? Are you with me today? I read it again. Access begins with a gift, grows with service, consolidated by sacrifice. Consolidated by. Let me bring you what to somebody today. You're in a season of your life whereby. You're, you are due for sacrifice. <laughs> Did you hear me? You are due. You are due for sacrifice. You are, you've enjoyed those relationships and God is saying, prepare, put your house in order. Because some relationships are going to knock on your door and they will demand sacrifice from you. And you cannot deny or despise it. Because you have enjoyed the gift of access and service in those relationships. And when the time of sacrifice comes, if you are not there, to make it, angels will be standing by your door, waiting for your reaction. <laughs> waiting for your reaction. Because the question... Do you remember those guys in, in the African movie we watched in those days, that they go and do rituals for money? And they've enjoyed the money. They now tell them it's time to do sacrifice. And they said they are not doing it again. The demons of really of the access will come and meet them and say, hmm? Is that true? With all the money, you'll be enjoying cars or whatever. Yes, it's time for sacrifice. I'm saying that to somebody, you are due for sacrifice. You've enjoyed the gift of access, and I want to prepare your mind for it, and make up your mind, and ask God for grace to help you. Because you are, I'm telling you, you are about to enter the, oh, it's a jackpot of your destiny if you can just pass through this last stage. You've enjoyed the gift, you've enjoyed the access, uh, the gift, you've enjoyed the service. It's time for sacrifice, and you must be ready. It can cost you your time. It can cost you, hallelujah. But look, when you when you when you were there in the days of sacrifice, you know. Let me round up with this scripture, and I, I share it in the influential some months ago, and I, I I struggled to recover from it. God woke up one morning and said to Abraham, "Take your son, your only son, to the land I will show you. Go and offer my sacrifice." The guy took everything with his son. They got there. When he wanted to offer his sacrifice, God said, "Stop it! Don't do it." And then what God said next was what surprised me. You know what God said? God said to him, He said, Now, Abraham, I know you fear me. You know, it's a very simple statement. Now I know you fear me. When I read that, I said, God, let's talk about this thing. I, I'm not sure. What are you saying? So, are you saying that since Genesis chapter 12, when this guy had you the first time and took his father, everybody, leave his father and mother to learn you, we show him, he didn't fear you? 
When the guy woke up one morning and knew that Lot was having issues and he took all the servants in his house to go and rescue the guy, he didn't show you. When you are even walking to uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah to go and destroy it, and the guy came and prepared me for you and you gave him prophetic word that baby is coming, he didn't fear you. So why is it now that it's time for Isaac that you say, now I know you fear him? So what has the guy been doing before? It's because before it's just the, that access <laughs> when he had he didn't pray when God said to him leave your father and mother to love you God opened the vista of heaven and had and he had a voice of God for the first time are you with me it was access and all through the years he was servicing it servicing that relationship until the day of sacrifice until the day of sacrifice and that day of sacrifice <laughs> if if Abraham did not offer Isaac all the angels in them will just be looking like this. That you'll be enjoying the benefit is the deal of sacrifice. <laughs> it's the deal of sacrifice. What will you do when the deal of sacrifice shows up? When will you do? When will you do? When a friend, after 10 years, is asking you for help for the first time. What will you do? One of my pastors for about 25 years. I've known him since 1995. 1990, yeah, 1995. Became serious with Christ in 1997. This is 2000. And 22. Count how many years that is for me. For the first time in over 25 years, he's asking me for financial assistance. It was my deal of sacrifice. And those days are the days where probably the account is not smiling. Relationship, access, open <laughs> is a gift. Oh, go! Oh, I just met a friend. Oh, he's a wonderful friend. I like him. I like her. The way we even work everything. Oh man, I love it. Yes, it's the, it's, it's the initial level. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Grows my service, but consolidated by sacrifice. I say to you again, <laughs> it's time for sacrifice. And please, when that day comes, angels are waiting. God is saying, are waiting. What will you do in that day of sacrifice? You have to, if you consolidate that relationship in the season of sacrifice, I can tell you by the mercy of God, your reward will not just be 100% in heaven, it will be 100% on earth. And it's at that point that God can really trust you. And that's when you can really prove that indeed your life and your heart is accessible. And if you can do it once, I can promise you, more opportunities will be open to you because you are reliable. May the Lord bless His word in your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't forget one of the major words for today, apart from what we just discussed with you, is that for somebody under the sound of my voice today, God said to tell you, so I'm going to give you wisdoms to suspect errors. Wisdoms to suspect errors. You will see it from afar and you will avoid it. Get ready to a point in your life whereby mistake does not happen again by the mercy of the lord in the name of jesus father i declare your blessings to every of these faithful ones that listen to your sound through my mouth that you will honor strengthen and encourage them give them joy give them hope give them peace strengthen their heart and in the days of sacrifice help us oh god to prove that we are responsible and above all let your name be glorified in jesus mighty name we pray amen so God bless you tonight. Thanks so much for joining. Sorry again, I came up late. One of my guys just came into the country. Now I have to do the honor to go and pick him up from the airport. And the traffic was not really smiling. But thank God I made it. And I hope you're blessed today. Share this with somebody. Let people see the pages. I'm going to download, put it on Facebook, on, well, uh, on YouTube or whatever. But some of the things you've learned tonight, practicalize it. Teach people. Bless other people. And let them understand that we're in a season in our lives. Whereby God is paying more attention on our heart, and we have to learn to trust Him in the name of Jesus. So by the mercy of God, I'm going to see you next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. So just talk to you as I do on graphs. This is Deepa Panishle. Saying God bless you tonight. Let me say again, we pastor is in Flint Church right here in Medway, Kent side of United Kingdom. You know somebody that needs a pastor that needs cancer, needs a church, please recommend them. There's fire on our altar in the same place, church. Sunday services are always awesome. By the mercy of the Lord, we are expecting Pastor Shiye at the family this Sunday to be a blessing to us. Please talk to somebody about a safe church. You know, give them give them a number they can shut us up and we'll be a blessing to them in Jesus' mighty name. I see you 
again next week Thursday by the mercy of God. God bless. Thanks for joining us today. I salute your destiny. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you, she. Thank you. Oh, Tori, what's up? How are you doing there? Okay, thank you. Mine, God bless you. Bola, thank you. So great for Mola. Thank you. I said before, is again close to Savage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. God bless you. Sunday, oh, so happy to see you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Much honor to you. Bye.